Sandra and I had started on the process of looking at how we could improve and raise attainment in maths and Sandra was particularly interested in developing her own specialism and actually looking at how we could make higher standards for our children who perhaps as they moved up into high school might be turned off from maths so how could we make them so secure in their learning that they enjoyed maths and engaged in maths. We went along to the, the maths hub session and we saw the Singapore Maths Project and we thought this could be perfect because it could just marry in your research with new material yeah. and we liked the look of the books and said right let's have a go at that. Mm -hmm. So that's now been in place since January, we, we, obviously the books arrived and it was a case of well it's not at the start of the year but let's start as if it is the beginning yeah. of, of the project so as if the children were at September realising we'd have to do some quite quick um, work on the early stages of the books, otherwise there was a danger the children might think, I've learned this before. Yeah. Um, my name is Mr Hogg, I'm a Year 1 teacher at Holbrook Primary School and we're learning to the Inspire Maths course. I would like everybody to open up to page 60. What does, page, what does the number 60 look like? What does the number 60 look like? That's 16. Six and a zero. Page 60. Once you've found it, year one, can you open it up, pop it on the carpet in front of you? Things in the classroom, as you can find, have four sides. Okay? You've got five minutes. Stand up, look around the classroom, and write them down on your whiteboard. If you can't write them down, maybe draw a picture instead. How many sides? Four. Four sides. But are the sides all the same length? No. It has two long sides and two short sides, doesn't it? So, is a square, does a square have two long sides and two short sides? No. Or all the sides? Are the and the books um, open up the thoughts and ideas of the children in the classroom. Um, as you can see, they're all really engaged. And we had the one comment that they love to work. Um, I think the use of the different materials that we have um, and the concrete representations, it shows the children that these shapes aren't just in maths alone, that they're all over the world. As you can see, we filmed all around the classroom. Um, some children started spotting these shapes in the environment as well. Um, so it's all about seeing things in a mathematical way, but then transferring it to their everyday lives as well. The children having their own textbooks to work in, it gives them a sense of ownership. Um, the children have really commented on how they enjoy having their own books with things inside rather than receiving a blank textbook. Um, I think for some children the idea of having a blank textbook that they have to fill out is a bit of a daunting experience. So having things there that they just have to add the finer details to has really helped them engage with their work as well. All the squares have to be coloured in yellow, all the triangles have to be blue and all the rectangles have to be green. So use all of these shapes here. So go and find, you can stand up and go. Good girl, well done. We're going to, the, we're going, you need to finish that page, don't you know, first of all. Is that a rectangle? Does it have two long sides and two short sides? So is it a rectangle? It is, well done, good girl. So you can And what are you learning about today then? Well done, that's really good. And what's, sorry, Jay, what's the shape you've got here? A triangle. A triangle. How do you know it's a triangle? Because it has three corners and three sides. Well done, that's really good. And what about you, Jake? I can see you've done lots of this already. What's the shape you've got here? Circle. It says name the shapes shaded in grey. In the oh, they're grey. Can you show me another circle on the page? A triangle. A triangle. Do we think she's right? Yeah. How do we know that she's right? Before I show you the shape. Because we know what shape it is. But how do you know what shape it is? How do you know it's a triangle? Because a triangle has three corners and three sides. Fantastic. Yeah. It's a triangle. Right, next one. I think 
The idea with the, the resources is we don't focus on what they're going to learn because the resources are there. I can spend more time now focusing on how they're learning it and to trigger their ideas and focus their thoughts into what they're learning um, because obviously the planning is there, it's good high quality work. Um, so there's less time for me spent on what they're learning and more time spent on how they're going to learn it and how to obviously direct the learning in the right direction as well. So we have multi-link cubes, multi-coloured, in trays, most schools do, um, and just that simple thing about pattern, do you want to explain what you did? Yeah, after going on the first training sessions, um, and it talked about spotting patterns, it occurred to me that it's much more difficult to spot a pattern if you've got about eight colours of multi-link. If you've got two colours of multi-link, much easier to spot the pattern, so simply we've just split up the multi-link so each class has got two colours. And I mean, obviously, they, if they need more colours, they can borrow from other classes. But it makes the pattern spotting easier. That I felt had changed as a result of things that you've been talking to the staff about in staff meetings was the importance of the language and making sure the children are very, very secure yes. in their use of mathematical language. And that the whole Singapore scheme is very good at that. Oh, what? Oscar, can you use uh, some different words? How do we know that a rectangle is a rectangle? Because a rectangle has four sides, but it's different because a square, because it's got two short sides and two long. Fantastic. And a square has how many sides? Four. It has four. And Lola, are the chairs? Uh, Squirts good as well. Yeah. But these books, they're different because they have, because if you had no, no words, you, you won't be able to do so you like the fact that it's yeah. got some words helping you yeah. say what to do well yeah. done. And Lola, what do you like about these books? I just can't stop working. It just can't stop working? Wow. Still... I think the thing about the scheme that, that is good is that it gives multiple representations. It allows you to spend more time, because obviously it's a mastery curriculum, so it allows you to spend more time on areas. Or, and, and obviously the... the um, objective is for some children to learn in a lot more depth and it gives because it's a slower pace for the children who are struggling um, they get the concepts and then what happens is when they move on to the next year group they haven't got those gaps the problem and I think Mr Hall would back this up the problem that he has found is for some children it's difficult to read it because it's it, some of it's a bit wordy um, so he's found that he's had to either support the poorer readers um, with children who are more able readers or with adults, um, adult support if he's got that in the classroom. Yeah. Um, but he had also said how it's moved some children's reading levels yes, on. Yes, yes. So we had a little discussion yesterday about whether that the, the cohort that we have has actually lent us to be successful because it yes. is going to have children who are EAL. Um, and if there's a lot of reading and a lot of understanding of, of the text, I can see how that could be uh, difficult for a more diverse group of children. But for our particular cohort, this has worked very well. Yeah, it does. And if anything, and I've always felt this actually, that when we moved away from textbooks and teaching, we were missing that opportunity to reinforce reading comprehension. Uh, and I think actually children reading the language, it does help them make that link between yeah. some of the descriptive language for maths, yeah. or the definitions and what they're actually doing. Yeah. Mr Hogg um, has reported that they have taken ownership of their own <laughs> their workbooks. And I was thinking about this actually, I was thinking, if you give a child a book that's just got squares in, or you give a child a book that's mm. got loads of pictures in, I mean, what would you prefer as a six-year-old? Yeah. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. Um, so I think they are they're quite chuffed with the books, they quite like the books. Mm. Um, and he doesn't use them every day, but then you don't have to use them every day um, for, for the actual scheme, do you? The question is, what happens next with the Singapore Maths? Because having started on that scheme and that approach, there the appears to be justification for keeping going, really. Um, I think what I'm really interested to see is what if we could take that cohort all the way through and see the impact of GCSEs yeah. and, and their, their willingness to, to sustain learning in maths and to have that confidence, um, certainly.